Amen. Of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The people of Jerusalem and the people of the village of Bethany, close to Jerusalem, had heard or have seen that Jesus had risen Lazarus from the dead, who was dead for four days. Four days he was dead. And when Jesus arrived outside the tomb and he told them to open up the tomb so that he can raise Lazarus from the dead, the people laughed and said, what is he doing? This man is dead for four days. His body is stinking. How can he raise him from the dead? No man can raise anybody from the dead. Four days dead, now that's impossible to retrieve, to restore, to resurrect. It's impossible because the organs have stopped working, the heart, the brain. And when the brain stops working, it deteriorates. It deteriorates. And then all the other, the liver, the kidneys, all the organs begin to disintegrate, to deteriorate, to become corrupt. How can a man who's been dead for four days come back to life? It is not possible. But what is impossible for you? What is impossible for me is possible for the Son of God. Hallelujah. God, with uh, King David videoing, is going to America. It's going to Europe. It's going all over the world. But you see, the devil wants to stop it. Hallelujah. The people heard this Jesus has brought back a man, Lazarus. He was dead four days. His body was stinking, but he went there, he told Lazarus to come out of the tomb. Lazarus walked out as if he was fresh, as if nothing had happened, as if he had never died. He just walked out of the tomb. People heard that. They heard it in Jerusalem, and they heard it in Bethany, and the word went out. This Jesus can bring people back who are dead and his fame began to rise hallelujah that on the next day he was going into jerusalem so a lot of the people decided let's go and greet him in jerusalem because i, I am sick maybe he can heal me or my father died yesterday maybe he will bring back my father back to life or i just want to see this man who has, is able to bring back people from the dead. I'll just touch him. Maybe I will get some great blessing from touching him. So thousands and thousands had heard, Jesus of Nazareth is coming into Jerusalem. Let's go and see him. Let's go and touch him. He has healing powers. Hallelujah. Amen. It was in the air. Jesus is coming to Jerusalem. And they thought, well, if he can bring people back from the dead, then surely he must be the Messiah, the expected one, the anointed one, the Christ of God, the one that God has chosen. And so they thought, well, now is our chance to rebel against the Roman, against the colonial power over us over Jerusalem, over Bethany, over Galilee. This is the time now. He is going to be the warrior, the general that will raise us up into a big army so that we can liberate Israel from the colonial power of the Roman Empire. And so they, many of them went there expecting military solution for their colonial captivity. Hallelujah. In Judah, that when a great military general who has won battles comes back into the city, they greet him with palms. They greet them with palms. They greeted Judas Maccabee, a very great Jewish 
a fighter who had fought the Greeks and had defeated the Greeks who were then uh, the colonial power over Israel. And when Judas Maccabees came into Jerusalem, the, all the people took palms, palm leaves, Hosanna, and they shouted out because he had brought freedom into Israel. Hallelujah. Expecting Jesus to be a military Messiah, the military Christ, the Christ that will set them free from the colonial power of the Romans, they went out with palm leaves. They went out with palm leaves to greet the Messiah Jesus, but they did not understand who Jesus really was. He came into Jerusalem as the Prince of Peace, but they wanted him to be the Prince of, of War. war. Testament and the teachings of Jesus should never encourage killing. Never. We are not a religion of holy war, jihad. We are not a religion that encourages people to die in the name of God. We do not believe by killing other people that God is happy. We believe that we must honor all people and we believe to love even the enemy, the people that hurt you the people that insult you, the people who don't respect you, even they, you must forgive them and love them. We are not a religion that goes and blows up aeroplanes. We are not a religion that kills people in the name of God. We are not a religion that wants to kill people. We are a religion that wants to save lives, heal lives, and bring eternal life to the people. Hallelujah! If you look at the life of Jesus, He never, ever killed anybody. There is nobody that Jesus ever killed. Nobody. He, in fact, would heal people. He would never kill them. He would heal them, but not kill them. We are dealing with a religion we are dealing with a religion that is a religion of love and not war. Hallelujah. On a donkey, on a donkey, and he began to ride into the streets of the city, the holy city of Jerusalem. He began to ride on a donkey. Why a donkey? Well, you see, in Europe and in Asia and in the Middle East, we have a horse and we have a donkey. The horse is the animal of war. The horse is the animal of the soldier. The horse is the animal for cavalry. The donkey is the animal of work. The donkey is the animal that carries the burden, that carries the weight of his master. The donkey is the humble animal. The horse is the mighty horse of war. Jesus chose the donkey, not the horse, to ride into Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Oh, he's sending a message. I am not the one that you expect to bring war. I am not the one that you expect me to rise and to fight the colonial power. I am not the one that God has sent in order to make a war, I am here as the King of Israel in order to defeat your biggest enemy, the devil, Satan. I am here to defeat Satan. Not the Romans, not the Americans, not the Liberians, but Satan. I am here to defeat Satan. That is the purpose of Christ coming into the world, so that you can be free from Satan, that you can be liberated from the sins that Satan wants you to do. That is the purpose of the Messiah, the Son of God. Not war, but liberation from sin. Hallelujah. Uh, now on National Independence Day uh, at the stadium, and uh, everybody is there, um, 
all the different government people, the ambassadors from America, from European Union, they're all going to be at the stadium and at State House, uh, and they're all expecting the president to come. Imagine, instead of coming in a car, a black big car, he comes on a bicycle. A bicycle. A bicycle. That's the horse and the donkey. You <laughs> yes, understand yes, the brother. difference? Yes, brother. yes, yes. Why isn't he using a big car? Why a bicycle? <coughs> because he's sending a message. He's telling us we have to be humble. Be humble like I am humble, you see. And so what Jesus' message on Palm Sunday is one, I have not come here to fight the enemies of Israel. I have come here to fight the enemy of your soul, which is Satan. And number two, to show them humility, not to be proud, but to be humble. The meaning of Palm Sunday, hallelujah. Himself will be exalted. He who exalts himself will be humble, hallelujah. The people went out to greet him with palm leaves, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And there are thousands and thousands greeting him. And they would throw palms on the ground and their garments as he rode through Jerusalem on a donkey, fulfilling the ancient prophecy. Behold, your king is coming, riding on a donkey. Hallelujah. Then he went straight to the temple and he began to throw away all the people that were using the house of God to make money. And he said, my house, my father's house is a house of prayer. It is not a shop. It is not a supermarket. It is not a place to make money. It is a place to worship God. Hallelujah. We never say to you, we never sell anything to you. You go to other places, they will sell you holy water. They will sell you holy oil. They will sell you things. They will sell you books. They will sell you this. They want money. We give everything for free because this is a house of prayer. This is not a shop for making money. We will not use holy oil to make money from you. We will not use blessed water to get money from you. You will get it for free. You will get it for nothing. We do not use this house to make money, hallelujah. Not only do we not ask for your money, this is the only church in West Africa that does not have a plate. Do you ever see a plate here? We say, give us your money, never. We never ask for your money. If anything, we give you money. At the end of the church, all the people wait because they want to be given money. We don't take, we give. Hallelujah! Money and they send it overseas to Nigeria, to Ghana. They take money from Sierra Leone, a poor country, and they give it to Nigeria and they give it to Ghana. No! We bring money from Europe. We bring money from America and give it to you. Hallelujah! It shall be called a house of prayer. It shall not be a house of commerce. We will not use this church to make money. We will not use the church in the name of God to put money and take it from you. No. Why? This is a house of prayer of the Lord God. Hallelujah. Christ who entered Jerusalem on a donkey, enter into your heart and enter into your life so that we can also receive the blessings that come through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.